I believe the narrow project is one of the very, very important projects for Queensland. This is one of the uh, most challenging projects I have been on. We have a conventional open cut trench, HDD, coffer dam, a dredge channel. We have not come across four methodologies being used in one pipeline project. This is the most technically challenging pipeline project ever constructed. The Narrows Crossing Project, won by MCJV, a joint venture between McConnell Dowell and CCC, Consolidated Contracting Company, encompasses the engineering, procurement and construction of the final pipeline sections of the world's first two CSG to LNG transmission pipelines. The Queensland Curtis LNG Pipeline, owned by the Queensland Gas Company, and the Australia Pacific LNG Pipeline, owned by a joint venture between ConocoPhillips, Origin and Sinopec, known as Australia Pacific LNG. These two massive pipelines will transport coal seam gas from the gas fields in the Surat and Bowen basins in Queensland to their respective LNG processing facilities on Curtis Island for export to overseas markets and create a new export industry for Queensland and Australia. The Narrows Crossing project is one of the most technically challenging and diverse pipeline projects ever undertaken in Australia. Because not only did it involve installing two 42-inch transmission pipelines in parallel from the mainland near Gladstone to Curtis Island with the construction footprint of just one pipeline, it was also extremely challenging environmentally, being located near the most sensitive terrestrial and marine environment in Australia, the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park. The environmental aspects of the project was really considerable in terms of knowing the regulations, implementing, complying with the recommendations. It was huge. The 12.5 kilometer Narrows Crossing project consisted of five geographical sections, each requiring a different construction methodology. The 2.5 kilometer Philippines Landing Road an onshore section between Mainline Valve 7 and Humpy Creek housed the laydown areas and main office sites. Pipeline construction here involved traditional trench and berry techniques. The 1.34 km Tidal Creek section, traversing Humpy and Tagini Creeks. Due to the sensitive environmental nature of this section, as well as being an area of cultural significance, horizontal directional drilling was chosen as the least intrusive construction technique. The 1.56 km marshland section, an environmentally sensitive and culturally significant marshy tidal flats area, involved pulling the pipe strings through a temporary sheet piled coffer dam. The 2.45 km narrows marine crossing, involved dredging a subsea trench for the bottom tow dual pipe pull. And the 5.4 km Curtis Island section, an environmentally sensitive area with hilly terrain which used conventional onshore pipeline construction techniques. The project also involved the construction of the QCLNG delivery station. A significant degree of temporary civil works dominated the early part of the project. More than 7,400 screw piles had to be installed to form the foundation of the temporary 4.5 km causeway to support the construction equipment. The causeway construction is a civil engineering feat in itself. Uh, initially starts off with a, a crew clearing mangroves, having to put up with the sand flies and the midges every day, covered in mud, having to work through tidal windows. The screw piles were connected with reinforcing rods, onto which layers of geofabric, ballast material and road base were built up to a height of half a metre above the highest astronomical tide. Two temporary bridges, engineered to support 14,000 tonnes of the twin concrete weight-coated pipe strings with floats, were constructed at Targini and Humpy Creeks to allow access over the creeks. A temporary 2.5 km twin-track railway line was constructed, which would support the 370 bogies needed for the final operation. The specific rail gauge meant that standard rail construction equipment could not be used. Simultaneously, a 1.6 km sheet piled coffer dam was constructed along the marshland section to provide a stabilised water filled trench within the tidal area for the dual pipe strings to be winched along. 
construction of complex temporary works was also undertaken on Curtis Island. Curtis Island's a logistically challenging location. It's, it's like constructing with a tablespoon. Every item of plant and construction equipment had to be transported to the island by landing craft and all construction crews had to be safely ferried to and from the island every day, a safety and logistical challenge. Civil works on Curtis Island consisted of the construction of a temporary winch pad, a coffer dam and a jetty to enable the installation of the pipeline across the channel. This project has been a remarkable testament to uh, civil engineering's ability to manage in a sensitive environment. With both Curtis Island and the mainland area being so environmentally sensitive, the project was subject to extremely stringent environmental conditions of approval. The project team had to deal with acid sulphate soils in the mangrove areas on both the island and mainland. All excavated soil had to be transported to designated storage areas, treated with lime, stored in another designated area and tested prior to being returned to its original location after pipeline installation had been completed. Fauna protection was significant on both sides of the Narrows. On the mainland, several kilometres of shorebird fencing was erected, designed to shield and protect nesting shorebirds from light associated with nighttime construction activities. In addition to the environmental advisors situated throughout all sections of the project, Additional spotters were placed on the barge and tugs during the dredging of the 2.3 kilometres narrows crossing to look out for dugongs, several species of turtles and other marine life. Our encounters were very minimal with marine life. We did have environmental scientists and environmental advisors on the, on the dredging spread. And they would keep an eye out on any uh, potential dugong sightings, would have to be reported. Daily monitoring of the turbidity of the water during construction and dredging ensured that the water quality was not compromised by the project's activities. Despite being limited by tidal windows and shipping traffic, the dredging operation completed the six metre wide dredge trench, the depth of four metres in the main channel and a seven metre depth in the shallows over a period of six months. Hopper barges transported the spoil material to an approved deep sea disposal site 50 kilometres offshore in accordance with the environmental conditions applied by state and federal environmental departments. On the mainland, CRC automatic welding equipment was used to weld the 1.067 metre outside diameter X70 high grade steel pipe. Each concrete weight coated pipe weighed 22 tonnes. Each pipeline was created out of three separate strings, 1.2, 1.35 and 1.5 kilometres in length, which were welded together, inspected, hydro-tested and certified before being strapped with 1,350 floats. In January 2013, the first stage of the pipe pull began. With safety and environment the top priorities, all personnel on both sides of the Narrows were respectively assembled for the pre-start safety briefings, reminding everyone about procedures, protocols and exclusion zones, and strict channels of communication to be implemented during the pipe pull. Over two days, both pipeline strings were individually winched to the edge of the coffer dam. Then, after 30 months of planning and preparation, the twin pipeline strings were pulled into the coffer dam by two 70-ton winches, positioned at different locations on top of the coffer dam, one near the entry and one near the exit. This phase was particularly complex as the pipeline moved through the first three stages of support, initially moving on rail bogies, followed by adjustable roller supports as the pipelines entered the water until the two pipelines were floating in the coffer dam. In February 2013, after liaising with the Gladstone Port and Harbour Authorities, the Narrows was closed to all shipping traffic and the main pipe pull began. The messenger wire, supported by buoys, was spooled out from the stern of a tug and taken across to the mainland overnight. A winch on top of the coffer dam on the mainland then pulled the messenger wire and its attached main pull cable across the channel. 
With the aid of inflatable buoyancy units, the main three-inch cable was pulled across the narrow seaway into the cofferdam and attached to the pull head. As soon as the tension was taken up, the 450-ton capacity linear winch on Curtis Island began to pull the twin pipelines across the channel. On the mainland, the rail bogies carried the pipelines into the cofferdam and the pipe was on the move. Once the pipes cleared the cofferdam, selected buoys were removed from the pipeline by pulling on a release wire, allowing the pipes to sink to the trench bottom. A 24-7 operation over several days, the pipe pull was one of the most challenging activities on the entire project and was one of the biggest milestones. A highly successful operation, safety incident free, reflecting the knowledge and experience of the entire project team. At 9 p.m. on the Friday night, after only five days, the twin pipes emerged at Curtis Island, the end of a well-planned and well-executed engineering and construction feat. Over the next few months, the subsea concrete-coated pipeline was covered and the trench was backfilled with filtered ballast material that was placed by excavator on a barge. The horizontal directional drilling through the creek section was over 1.4 kilometers long, which, in addition to the large 42-inch diameter of the pipe, classified the HDD crossings for the two pipelines as world-class installations. Experiencing challenges due to the subterranean conditions, the team decided to redesign the HDD alignments so that the drill rig could be positioned away from the project's other activities and avoid delays to the project's completion. Extending the length of one of the HDD profiles to 1,525 meters and increasing the final borehole size to 62 inches allowed the pullback operation performed by a 500-ton rig to be seamlessly completed. Meanwhile, on Curtis Island, 5.3 kilometers of pipe had been strung, welded, coated, buried and hydro-tested and the QC LNG delivery station, which connected to the LNG plant 900 meters away and included three filter coalescers, a pig receiver and an event stack, was constructed and completed by the end of 2013. This project is an example of a sustainable pipeline project. The safety record uh, was outstanding. Very proud to say we have had no lost time injuries on this project and we've done this with nearly two million hours. The Narrows project has been a, a phenomenal success. Uh, what's made it so successful is, is the teamwork between the, the integrated groups on the project. Both companies will have a lot of uh, positive reputation out of this project. It is an operation which we're really proud of.